Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is The Benefits of Hypnosis and What is Hypnobabies? In this episode, we are speaking with Carrie Tushoff, who is the founder and director of Hip- Hypnobaby Childbirth Hypnosis. Carrie Tushoff is a nationally renowned speaker and writer on a wide range of pregnancy and childbirth concerns. Her subjects include fertility, prenatal and childbirth choices, informed consent issues, health and low risk status concerns, comfort in childbirth, the power of birth language and midwifery advocacy. As a childbirth educator since 1989, a doula and a hypnotherapist, Carrie has developed many educational programs for pregnant people, birthers, medical and childbirth professionals and hypnotherapists. These efforts have become immensely popular and have started a chain reaction of interest to change the way we give birth, how newborns are cared for, the way natural childbirth is perceived by the general public as well as the medical community. Carrie created a very comprehensive childbirth program for her own HypnoBabies Childbirth Education. This unique program has trained hundreds of thousands of students to use medical grade hypnosis techniques and give birth a much easier and more comfortable way. Carrie, it is such an honor to have you on. I'm really excited to talk about hypnosis. So first off, what is hypnosis? Well, hypnosis is a very normal state of kind of altered perception. Mm -hmm. So we are in states of hypnosis many times a day. People just don't realize it. They think that hypnosis is what they see in stage shows where the stage hypnotist is uh, very adept at picking out people in the audience who would like to participate and be part of the program and act silly. But therapeutic hypnosis is very, very different. So um, first of all, we're in a state of hypnosis when we're waking up, when we're falling asleep, when we're driving, you know how you've been driving and all, all of a sudden you get to wherever you are and you've been concentrating so hard on something you don't remember the last five minutes mm-hmm. and you've been in hypnosis. Um, anytime that you're reading a book and maybe somebody's calling your name and it takes a while for you to realize somebody's calling your name and the same is true for anybody who's playing a video game or watching a movie or or really concentrating and focusing on a screen of any kind as the images go back and forth even if they're letters they put us into a hypnotic state so um, we are in states of hypnosis over and over and over again all day long and therapeutic hypnosis which is what we use in hypno babies is a way for us to direct that to get into a a deeper state where uh, we have the conscious mind, we have the subconscious mind where all the change takes place. And in between we have the critical faculty, which is like the guardian. And it filters and and decides what can get in and, and what can get back out of the subconscious basically. And so we want the guardian to take a nap. So we enter a state of hypnosis, which basically lets the guardian take a nap And then we can access the subconscious mind where there are hundreds, thousands, even of folders in there of everything that we've ever seen, done, heard, uh, experienced. And we're going in there and we're going to basically retrain the part that we want. We're not taking anything out. We're just adding in uh, new belief systems. So that's what that's all about hypnosis in a nutshell. (laughs) That's super cool. So how is hypnosis used in childbirth? Well, um, our hypno students, they start their retraining by using hypnobabies, hypnobirthing um, about 28 to 30 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then um, so what they're doing is they're reading our materials, which are super, super important because we're also a childbirth education course. And it's very important that anybody who is going to give birth take a really good consumer-oriented childbirth education course. And if you're doing hypno, you need your childbirth education with your hypnosis, not 
in another class so that the philosophies and the words and everything are the same and mm-hmm. there's no conflict. So our hypno students, they they read the materials and the materials will tell them um, to listen to certain tracks, at audio tracks, these are hypnosis tracks, at certain times and each week the tracks change. So there's quite a few tracks and it, each track actually builds upon the one before it. Mm-hmm. So we're building and building just like if you started out and you, you wanted stronger arms. So you started out and you were using a five pound weight, but then in another couple of weeks, you could use a 10 pound weight and it would get stronger and stronger. And eventually you might be able to get to 15 and so forth. You're building and building and building. So at the end, you have what you want. And that's what we're doing with hypnosis by retraining the belief system about childbirth inside of our subconscious minds. On the conscious side of it, We also have affirmations, which are one line, very positive um, phrases that our hypno students listen to on a daily basis. And what that does is it helps from the outside in to basically retrain or deprogram, I should say, from all of the negative messages that oftentimes pregnant people are bombarded with. Mm-hmm. It could be on a birth show. It could be from friends or relatives or the lady at the supermarket who comes up and rubs your tummy and says, oh, my God, darling, I was in labor for 72 hours. Let me tell you all my horror stories. <laughs> so we're we're working from the outside in and from the inside out to retrain the conscious and mostly the subconscious mind, because the subconscious mind is where everything comes from every process in the body every thought that we think everything comes from the subconscious mind so we're retraining it to believe that the sensations that we're going to be having when we give birth to our babies which are perfectly normal sensations Mm -hmm. these might be pushing pulling tightening sensations baby movements all of those things still exist but we're reframing it in the subconscious mind so that they feel differently So that there is really literally what's called hypnoanesthesia going on at the same time. Now, hypnoanesthesia is a real thing. And a lot of people don't realize this, but there are people out there who have allergies to medical anesthetics. Mm -hmm. So they have to work with a hypnotist ahead of time to do dental or medical surgery so that when they get in there, they literally are not medically anesthetized. They are mentally and hypnotically anesthetized. So hypnoanesthesia is used and they use that during their surgery. So we're doing the exact same thing, uh, basically um, hypnoanesthetizing from the top of the breast down to the middle of the thighs, which is the entire birthing body and allowing it to move and, and we use our arms and we do everything, but that part of the body feels things differently now. When we get into our birthing time, which is what we call labor, we have a a bunch of different words that we use that are all about association. So if you associate, for instance, the word labor with hard work, we have to change that to birthing. Yeah. And that is a very positive thing. And we make it a positive thing in hypno babies. So then Uh, After listening to these tracks one after another and practicing their hypnosis for eh, two months, and when they get into their birthing time, uh, they basically just all the cues are there. It they get activated. The cues get activated by certain things. They've been practicing a physical cue. There are a couple of physical cues. There are a couple of emotional cues, just mental cues that they can say. Their birth partner can put uh, his or her hand on their shoulder or forehead, and that's been retrained in there to help them have more hypnoanesthesia and more relaxation in the birthing body. Um, They can listen to tracks. We have tracks that are specifically for the birthing time. So they activate the cues and they keep the person in hypnosis and deeply relaxed. So they can do it inside their head. They can do it with the help of a birth partner or a hypno doula, or they can do it by listening to their tracks and they are, they stay in a state, a deep state, a state we call somnambulistic 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is a very deep state of hypnosis throughout their entire birthing time. But we have what's called eyes open childbirth hypnosis. And that means that in between birthing waves, which is what we call contractions, they just can walk and talk and, you know, drink wow. and go to the bathroom. And they're still deeply in hypnosis, but completely awake and aware and in tune with what's going on. So during those contractions, which again, we call birthing waves, they are much deeper. They instantly go much deeper when a birthing wave comes on, the hypnoanesthesia starts taking place in the body and those birthing waves are much, much more comfortable. Well, I wish I knew about this when I was having my kids. That's just, <laughs> this Me is too. really interesting. I love it. So who chooses to use hypno babies? Well, it's interesting because a lot of people think that uh, the majority of our students are home birthers or crunchy people, they would call them. Mm -hmm. And in actuality, 95% of our students um, are giving birth in a hospital. They're between the ages of 25 and 40. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're either having their first baby and are going to then <laughs> avoid that first horrible birth by choosing uh, a really great way to give birth, a much easier way to give birth, or they're having a second or subsequent baby and they want a better birthing than the last time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those last time births are really awful. So now they're having a healing birth and not everybody's gonna have a pain-free birth. Hypno babies isn't even about having a pain-free birth. It's about having the best, easiest, most comfortable birthing experience that you can have. Yeah given the circumstances at the time. So we, you know, it's getting more and more and more popular as people realize that, you know, it's a really excellent way to avoid the kind of drugs that might, you know, s affect the labor. Some people don't want to have drugs in their, in their labor that would slow it down. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want drugs in their baby system. So they're going to go, you know, a more natural route. And that's what hypno babies is great for. So does using hypno babies for childbirth distance you from your birth experience or baby at all? Actually, no. <laughs> Moms are very, very in touch with what's going on with their babies, with their bodies, those movements of the babies. They can tell if the baby is, you know, turned around or in, the, you know, just needs a different position. There's a there's actually a mental connection between what's going on in the body and the mom's subconscious. So uh, they're very in tune with the baby and the body throughout their entire birthing. And they can be as aware of everything that's going on in the room at the same time, mm -hmm. even in a deep state of hypnosis, as they would like to be. So even during a birthing wave, when they're the most deeply in hypnosis, they can hear and detect what's going on all around them and be really in tune with that if they want to, or they can completely focus inward and, you know, let all that stay outside what we call the protective bubble of peace, which is a mental tool that really helps them stay in a, a very positive space, both during pregnancy and in their birthing. Interesting. So tell me what hypno babies eyes open childbirth hypnosis is all about. So that is the part where uh, it's built into every hypnosis track uh, after class three, um, when they're, when they're uh, learning the hypnosis, certain parts of the hypnosis from then on throughout the entire maintenance uh, period, their inner mind is retrained that anytime they would like to move, during their birthing, which many people do. They want to be up and around. This helps with uh, the birthing person's comfort. It also helps with positioning and descent of the baby. Oftentimes, the more upright we are, the easier it is for baby to descend and, you know, kind of maneuver around the pelvis a little bit and, um, you know, get into the right position. So our moms don't have to lay in a bed um, and just be, you know, uh, non-mobile, yeah. which, you know, sometimes happens if they think not our moms, but other 
programs moms will think that they just got to stay in one position in order for the hypnosis to continue on so that they don't get distracted. But all of that is built into HypnoBaby so they can move around, like I said before, walk, talk, go to the bathroom, drink, eat, you know, do whatever they want to and still stay in a deep state of hypnosis. Hey friends, I hope you are enjoying this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. This podcast would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of you, my wonderful community. To support your mama's podcast, please click the support link right down below and you can donate just as little as 99 cents. Also, follow me in the Shop Like to Know It app where you can follow me with all my exclusive content all the way from baby products I love, fashion and style, and everything in between. Now let's get back to the episode. And so what are other uses for hypnosis in pregnancy and postpartum? Oh my gosh, we have, we have hypnosis for eliminating nausea, which is extremely positive mm. <laughs> and popular. Um, we have hypnosis for eliminating the fear of needles, which a lot of people need and love. Uh, we have hypnosis for uh, sleep better sleep in pregnancy. And we have one for uh, the entire family mm -hmm. after baby comes. Um, we have one for breastfeeding. We have one that's called after baby comes and it's all about sleeping in sync with your baby and feeling confident about your, you know, parenting decisions about taking care of your child. We have uh, new parent affirmations, which are basically just affirmations, no hypnosis, but you listen to them and you are you know, comforted and, and you realize you are, you're a very good parent and <laughs> these are your, this is your confirmation and everybody needs that boost. So, um, we also have, uh, reach turning hypnosis. We have a whole set of hypnosis for life, which is stopping smoking and weight release and, better study habits and stress and anxiety and deep relaxation for anyone who can't relax their body and their mind at the same time. Um, focus and concentration, if I didn't say that one. Um, and it's, it's we have many, many other kinds of tracks. And we, we really want our moms to continue, or they want, and they asked for, but so we really want our students to continue on with their hypnosis after they have their babies mm -hmm. by getting the breastfeeding set, the, um, after your baby comes the, uh, insomnia one peaceful sleep now for all is what it's called. And, it, and even your children can listen to it. Yeah. We have a toddler sleepy time track, which is our actual most popular track. And it's for people who have little ones and they are just guided gently to go to sleep and sleep all night in your own bed, wherever your own bed might be. And they learn a little bit of independence from that as well. Um, so that's why it's our most popular. track. So we have a lot of different tracks for people after their baby comes. Oh my God. I got to get my hands on that toddler sleep track. I could see why that one would be popular and to feel confident in their own bed because we have problems with the own bed thing going on over here. Um, so do you have any last words before I dive into my four questions today? Um, I, I just think that if people were more aware of how much hypnosis could help them change different aspects of their lives, they would be teaching their own children this, or maybe we would be teaching it in school. And by now, everybody would understand it and not think that it's some weird thing. Because it's not a weird thing. As I said before, we're, we're in states of hypnosis all the time. All we're doing with therapeutic hypnosis is guiding ourselves to go a little bit more deep into hypnosis. And then retrain parts of our mind that maybe have a phobia or, um, you know, want to stop smoking or, you know, be a better parent or anything. It's, it's got a lot of uses for, for the therapy of the emotions. So. Well, that's awesome. And all of the links are down below provided in the show notes. If you would like to check everything out, 
um, that Carrie is talking about. Um, so my first question, who and what inspires you? Well, honestly, my, my hypno baby students inspire me. And this is why, because they have all stepped out of the box. So everybody else is going in and having their epidural at two centimeters. And by the way, I have a healthy respect for that. Yeah. I did it with my first child and I so know why people choose epidurals, you know, because they don't know there's another way, first of all. And second of all, because, you know, sometimes there's a real need for them. So I have a very healthy respect for that. But since most people are doing that, our students have actually decided they want to give birth a different way. They want to give themselves the gift of having an easier pregnancy because you're going to be more confident right off the bat. You know, as soon as you start hypno babies, you have a much more joyful anticipation of your baby's birthing because it works from the inside out and the outside in. So our students choose that for themselves and then they give themselves their birth partners, their babies, and even the people who are around them, the gift of seeing how different childbirth can be mm -hmm. than what is normally out there. And oftentimes birth professionals, for instance, have never seen a normal birth. They just, people come in, they, they get hooked up to an IV, they get an epidural and the baby is pushed and pulled out of them. And that's just the way they were trained in medical school. And that's what they see all the time. So they're, our students are giving everyone a gift from themselves all the way to the birth professionals. And to me, that is super, super inspiring. It is. It is. It's really cool. I mean, I've never heard of it before, so I'm super honored to have you on and to discuss and to share this information because I think it's, such a cool and an amazing outlet or new tool that, you know, us women can use during the birthing process. And what do you have to lose in trying it? You know, like see the difference in the compare and the contrast of like what it was like, you know, without hypno babies and then what it would be like, you know, doing the hypno babies program. So I think it's, I think it's such a blessing and an, an honor to have you on to, to share this information. So well, thank you. my second question is um, what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? I wish I would have known how powerful hypnosis is. Again, I had two very painful births, which is why hypno babies exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right off the bat there, that's when I wish that I had known that my inner mind could make a huge difference on my body, my body's responses, my uh, my level of fear. Once once that pain started, my level of fear just skyrocketed, and there was no way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I wish that I would have known that this sort of thing it exists and how powerful it is. Yeah. My third question is, what's the essential part of your daily routine? Well, I meditate every morning. And I think that that is extremely important for all of us. I think people have a rather different idea about what meditating is as well. You don't have to sit on a cushion and yell OM over and over again. It's more quieting your mind and allowing your mind to um, just be gentle. And if, if thoughts come in, let them go back out and just let yourself be quiet because that quiet time. And again, if we taught our children this, and there are places who do this in school, <laughs> there are places who have the children all sit down and for 20 minutes, they're just quiet and relaxed. Mm -hmm what a huge difference to the start of your day and, you know, allowing yourself to not only relax your body and just let it be relaxed, just let it be a relaxed, allow it to be relaxed, but also your mind because our minds are constantly going, oh, yeah. it's constantly, what do I have next? And what is happening next week? And the kids and the dogs and all this kind of stuff and work. So just having that time, 
is tremendous. Yeah. I think that's, that's a great reminder to sit with yourself, give yourself some time. We do get lost in the hustle and bustle of life, like you said. So it's a great reminder. And it's always good, I think, to do it in the start of the day because it helps set you up for the rest of the day for things come in and crash and mess up the course of like what you had planned. You're a little bit more centered and grounded to handle it. So it's a great reminder. Um, and then my fourth question is the best advice you've ever received. The best advice I ever received was actually regarding childbirth. And it was um, because I was a Bradley natural childbirth instructor. So when it came to, I thought I knew everything about giving birth from being a childbirth instructor, but I did not. Uh, and so um, I was told in my training, and then again, when I was going to have a baby, that all choices are mine. And that is something that most pregnant people do not know. They don't know it when they're pregnant, that they can choose or not choose different treatments, different tests, whatever it is that maybe it feels wrong to them, or they need to do more research on it. They don't need to just go in and do whatever it is. They don't need yeah. to have an induction just because somebody says they need one, they need to research it. Um, and then during the birthing, all choices, and this is something nobody knows, except hypnobaby students and Bradley students and natural childbirth students of all kinds is that you're in your birthing time and it is your choice what happens you do not need to have an IV you do not need to have uh pitocin you do not need to have any sort of intervention if you don't want it or don't think that it's right for you or your baby or your family and most people think well they told me I had to no you don't you absolutely don't and to me, that was the most important thing because I it would it made a huge difference to me. Then the the birthing the births were very painful, which as I said were was is why hypno babies exist because I wanted to find something that were, other people could you know do <laughs> that would keep them from suffering. Mm -hmm. um, but the rest of it to know that I could make all these choices, that I could tell them how I wanted to give birth. And when they made suggestions, which are all they are, then I considered them and how they would affect me and my baby and my family. And based on the research that I had done, I made the choices. So that is the most important thing that I think advice I've ever given, get gotten and given. Yeah. I know with my first child, um, so Pitocin doesn't work for me. I don't labor. And um, they gave it to me the first time. It didn't work. And then they wanted to like put the balloon in me and like try and like give me the medicine. I don't know what it's called to like help me contract. And like that didn't really do anything. And then they put me on Pitocin again. And I told them I didn't want to go on it again. But they like forced me to go on it again. I was crying to the doctor like, it didn't work for my mom. It didn't work for me. It didn't work the first time. It didn't work the second time. Like I'm not doing this again. And they like, were like, no, we're doing it again. And I'm like, please, I don't. And then they made me do it. And they, you know, it like goes up. That's like one to two, whatever. It goes up to like 20. I don't know. I forget the number thing, but like, well, how about we go up to like 14? I'm like, I had to like meet in the middle because they didn't, they wouldn't let me have the choice because they wanted me to have you know, a natural child, not natural, but a vaginal childbirth um, so badly. And it was like, not going to be possible for me. You know, I had to end up going into emergency C-section, but that was traumatic on my first, my first yes. born. That was really traumatic on him. That was a lot of stuff they were pumping in. And, you know, it affects our babies, like the medicines that they give us. And I was upset because I wasn't being heard and I wasn't being listened to. And I sometimes feel that like the medical community, they're so cocky and they think that they know it all, you know, and clearly they don't, and they don't listen to the patients sometimes. And that's what happened to me. My real doctor was out of town. So I had another person, um, I actually had 
uh, two different people, maybe three, I forget because I was in for so long because I would not progress because none of their medical interventions were working for me and they weren't listening to me. And it was, it was really hard on my body and I felt really bad for my son, but he's here, he's happy, he's alive and we're all good. And, um, but yeah, well, here's, here's just something to remember for you and your viewers the words, I do not consent, because that is a legal term. Mm -hmm. And they cannot do anything after that. Even if it's, they were just going to stick their hands up there and break your water. And you say, I do not consent. You can literally kick them off you. <laughs> not that I would suggest kicking anyone. Yeah. But I'm just saying that most people don't realize it. They don't. You didn't. And that's okay. But it, unfortunately... The trauma was not just to your son. The trauma was to you. Mm -hmm. And that is because you were not being heard. Yeah. So exactly. I have a big heart for people who have been forced into things and did not realize, you know, and it's, it's just, there's, there's a lot of birth trauma yeah. out there. I even told them in the beginning, I was like, Pitocin did not work for my mom. So there's a big chance that it will not work for me. And they just wanted to do what they wanted to do. But if I think if I use those words, I do not consent, you know, and I'm not thinking, I'm not in my right mind, you know, like, well, you don't, but the, you don't know. So smart. And you have to remember those, those, that, that sentence. Yeah. But also, I mean, most people don't realize it. Mm -hmm. they, they just really don't know. They go into their birthing time thinking that, and no offense to any medical professionals because they all want the best outcome. Exactly. There's no doubt yeah. that they all want the best outcome. However, there are hospital protocols and medical protocols that if they follow them, help them to do three things. One is make more money. The second is avoid litigation or try. And the third one is to save time. Mm -hmm. So time, money, and litigation are three big motivators. And again, they feel like if they, if they force people into doing things that help them with time, money, and litigation, what, why not, yeah. you know, but the effect on the birthing person and the birthing family, the baby, when the baby comes out, you know, that's why we are such a great childbirth education program. And there are other childbirth education programs out there that teach the same sorts of things that we do. And that is basically be your own medical advocate, mm -hmm. learn as much as you can ahead of time, research everything that you are concerned about. And then when you're in there, you can say the words, I'd like to take some time to think about this right now. And if they say, no, nah, you're just going to do this, you can say, I need to pray about it. Yeah. Because again, that is something they cannot deny you. Mm -hmm. And so you take the time, discuss it with your birth partner. If you have a doula, you discuss it with her and she can't make any decisions for you or intervene. However, it helps to have a little discussion about what you want. And when they walk back in, you can say the words, I decided that I'm going to do such and such. Yeah. And if they say, well, you have to do this, if it's an emergency, a medical emergency, of course you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Of course you are. And there's no doubt. However, if it's not, then you can say the word, I decline or I do not consent. Yeah. And they can't make you do a thing. They can't. Exactly. They can't kick you out. What are they going to do? <laughs> they cannot kick you out. Yeah. So. And I think sometimes maybe people get fearful of that. Like then they won't get the help or the service that they need. Maybe that's, that's, that's true. Sometimes people, why are people just fearful. are complicit and compliant and they just go along with the flow because they are fearful of the repercussions. And that's okay. And there are people who, who make up a whole birth plan ahead of time and they say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I don't want that. And then when it, the time comes, things start changing, you know, mm -hmm. the birth plan goes a little awry, people, the medical team makes different suggestions, and now they're on another path. 
Exactly. And and that is where, well, hypno babies has a change of plans hypnosis script just for that. So if their plans change, they can still use hypnosis to help deal with that emotional thing. And so that their body and their mind work together. You know, the temperature doesn't go up, the, the veins don't go flat, you know, that we're all working together. So, but yeah, there could be a change of plans. You could get in there and, and go, well, I would rather just have er, there just be a nice flow of emotion going on here rather than get my original birth plan. Okay. Yeah. That's totally cool. Perfect. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for coming on this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. It was such an honor to have you on. All of her links are down below in the show notes. Don't be shy. Go say hi. Um, If you're expecting a baby or you're interested, I would definitely check this out. Um, It is revolutionizing the way we give birth. And thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.